In this video, I'm going to be showing you what I believe to be the most effective way to deal with uh, e5 in case you are opening up with uh, king's pawn. Because I think by far the most uh, common opening, especially for beginners, is uh, the uh, very natural uh, Italian opening. That is by far, I think, uh, one of the most uh, researched uh, opening in chess, which... Uh, I think it's definitely okay, but uh, you may be missing on a lot of value by uh, not playing the opening that I'm about to suggest. Similar story when it comes to the Rui Lopez. Those are definitely very well established openings that uh, you can definitely use and uh, have them as a lifetime repertoire if you're planning on becoming a master. However, if you're looking on escaping low elo, very fast and uh, in a very efficient way i think the best choice for you is actually to go for something else which is the vienna by going for the move uh, knight c3 not only that uh, this move is super efficient uh, against uh, low rated opponents but is also something that has a very solid reputation you can uh, definitely play this even in uh, higher rated games, I think a very good example nowadays of somebody that's playing this opening quite successfully is Hikaru Nakamura, especially in rapid time controls. Also, Adireza Firuzia, uh, the young and up-and-coming prodigy, uh, comes to mind uh, when you think about a Vienna model player. And just to show you, one of the main ideas of this before we... Uh, jump into some games where I'm going to be trying to explain you my thinking process on uh, how I play the Vienna against lower rated opponents is that, uh, well, after knight c3 already one of the most common moves are black in the position is knight f6, which uh, gives you the uh, very interesting opportunity to go for the Vienna gambit by playing the move f4. And here, black already has sort of a only one decent move, which is d5. I mean, if you're below 1200, I would say chances that your opponent will find this are quite low. And they're mostly going to go for um, pawn takes on f4 in this position, where you can simply go e5 already uh, grabbing a very promising uh, advantage, close to plus one. And we have only arrived on... Uh, Move four. I mean, main point being that they go knight g8, uh, threatening check. We just play knight f3. We go d4 next, establishing a strong center. Pick up the f4 pawn, and uh, white is simply uh, much better. Now, besides that, you can also encounter a move such as knight to c6, where going for the Vienna gambit wouldn't be working uh, as well, since uh, now because the knight is like no longer on f6, like gets an additional threat of uh, queen h4, which is kind of tricky to deal with and if you're trying to do the same knight f3 then uh, g5 could be potentially a little bit annoying but instead of this here we can go for the vienna game so we're no longer gambiting but uh, simply playing the move bishop to c4 with similar ideas because uh, one of the most common uh, ways for uh, black to deal with this um, in case they go bishop to c5 we've got a very tricky queen g4 idea highlighting the fact that uh, g7 is not that easy to protect and if they play the move uh, knight to f6 uh, we can go for d3 with the main point being that uh, on bishop c5 we're going to be using the same f4 idea followed by knight f3 putting pressure in the center so if that's something that you may be interested in please feel free to use the timestamps uh, from the description select the games that uh, you find the most useful for you and I'll see you inside the video. All right, all right, getting the white pieces and uh, let's see whether we can get another interesting Vienna or not. That really seems to be the, the theme of the first video. Are we going to get to see knight f6 and then a Vienna gambit? That would make it uh, quite a complete video, but there is bishop b4 yet again. I'm going to stick to the main weapon, okay? Just playing bishop to c4, literally like in the previous case. And when he takes... Nothing wrong of uh, going BC, but I really want to go DC, don't you? Just opening up the bishop and then knight f6. How do I want to play that? Okay, I think I'm just actually going to play BC. I'm going to try to stick with principal play, uh, taking towards the center and... Uh, yeah, just feels like the easier move to play overall. 
Now he's attacking my pawn. We want to make sure it's defended. He's going to castle. I'm going to play knight f3. He can also go d5. Then I think I'll have to just go pawn takes on d5. Pretty good move by him there. He's going to be targeting uh, c3. I could play queen f3 just for uh, <laughs> for the trap. You know, move the knight because of the mate. But uh, I mean, he could go back, but you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, okay. When this is a threat, I think fair to just play bishop to d2 and uh, just go knight f3 castle. This is quite a, quite a typical structure as well. You could definitely get this. I think especially in the lines where they would normally get bishop to b4 in like the proper way. I mean, after they... Let's say develop uh, both knights and then on bishop c4, uh, knight e2, they play like bishop b4 and quick d5. You could get that more from those main lines. Okay, now we're just gonna stick with uh, knight f3 castle. There's like little point in playing knight e2 in this structure. I don't really think it's like uh, anything special. So I'll just stick to this. Idea is to castle next. I do expect him to pin me now with bishop to g4. Uh, knight f4 definitely looks like a suspicious move. I mean, his main point is that if we take e5, there's like knight v2 among other things. So I think sticking with the simplest bishop f4 would be perhaps best. I mean, nothing wrong with castling either, but uh, it just feels like we gotta get rid of uh, such pieces next to our king. And then, um, yeah, I think we just finished development and castle. We play rook e1, just occupy the open file next. Still expecting him to pin me, but that's not not really the greatest move, I feel like, since g5, g4 is sometimes annoying, so bishop is uh, blocking that path a little bit. I think now I'll start with a nice little rook b1 move, activating and making use of the open b file, and after he plays b6, I'm just going to play like rook e1, okay? Your rooks should be... Controlling the open files always, I mean, no matter what, you simply cannot go wrong with that. And uh, I think after that, yeah, we just continue with uh, moves such as h3, expecting him to play knight c6, and then maybe we go h3. If bishop h5, rook b5 looks like a strong move. Rook e8 is definitely suspicious for a number of reasons. But yeah, like first thing that pops to mind here, just so you know, there is takes and bishop d5. But apparently c6 is saving the rook, so maybe that's not it. Also, I'm thinking of bishop f7 when whenever this gets played, and then knight e5, so we can pick up the bishop. The line goes rook e5, queen e4, but there is rook e1 check. That also doesn't seem to be working uh, that well either. So the question is, why is this bad? Um, uh, maybe knight, uh, no, knight g5. I was actually thinking about this move, like, a little bit. But it's kind of an advanced, uh, thing, I would say. We should try to definitely come up with, like, an easier solution. I think the easier solution is just to perhaps take. And then play h3. I think that's, like, what... Most of the 600 players could do here. Also, bishop d5 is not that bad, but c6, and I don't see where that is going. So I feel like this is simplest. Preparing to advance, and let's see whether he's going to keep uh, the pin or not. I guess is that he's going to take, since these guys, uh, I think below 1,000, tend to exchange pieces, like, all the time. So, yeah... A bit predictable in uh, in that manner, but you shouldn't like really play moves making the assumption that they're gonna take all the time or stuff like that. That's that's the wrong way of thinking of it. You really wanna like uh, focus on the optimal play and have a plan no matter what they do. You should really think that you're playing against Magnus Carlsen. and that should be like your attitude in general. So underestimating the opponent. May work in these rating ranges, but it is definitely not a very healthy thing to do long term. So I don't know why opponent is uh, tanking for so long here. I'm just going to be playing um, 
h3 against his only move that is queen captures so i know actually the thing is i kind of stalled for like a minute on <laughs> rook takes on e8 so he felt like maybe i went away the dynamic is a little bit strange in this rating range since people don't really expect you to think about moves i mean I have that uh, bad habit sometimes to actually calculate more than two moves. You should give it a try, guys. Mm. Can take you pretty far if those two moves are calculated precisely. Okay, I'm not like claiming to calculate further than two moves, but you don't really need to calculate uh, that deeply <laughs> until certain rating ranges. A typical blunder would be knight c6 because of bishop d5 ending the game. He finds c6, which is a good move, but we can just uh, collect the free pawn. Now the next step would be to get the rook involved. So we might uh, have to use uh, his majesty, the king, supporting the e1 square. So I think that's like a really dope move to play. Just threatening uh, rook e1 next and... Uh, taking advantage of the file so now that he plays b5 you know that the best defense is offense so go for the counter attack hitting his queen expecting queen f8 and then we'll have to drop the bishop most likely just play bishop b3 expecting that to happen That's like literally only move, I think. Otherwise, he's having uh, massive issues with uh, f7. Definitely giving up the queen is not an option, but uh, queen b8. Just inviting me to grab there with a check. Okay, okay. I don't need uh, to be asked uh, twice for things like that, but... Okay, there's like many winning moves. However, I just uh, stumbled across... <laughs> <laughs> this idea of potentially delivering a funny checkmate which may not work but just for the record could be very nice I'll just um, yeah, drop back to h5 because my queen was under attack he think he's knight now I expect him to play knight g6 I really expect him to do that and yeah, I think a uh, move that we want to watch out for is this so rook e4 makes sense. Now knight f4, we could just uh, move the queen and attack his knight one more time. Next, we could even consider uh, rook g6, threatening to eliminate the knight. But now imagine if we could play rook g6, rook g5, queen h7 is checkmate with rook h5 coming. So that would be like a very aesthetic mating net, but kind of doubt that uh, opponent will be this kind uh, to allow it the queen as expected i'm just gonna go like um queen g5 hitting the knight one more time sort of forcing him to go back and then maybe using this idea of rook g4 just trying to get in the somewhat spectacular finish you can go queen h2 now which is <laughs> pretty long queen move yeah he finds it I just gotta be honest uh, and uh, not let his rook to join with a tempo. So that's why I think. Uh, oh, by the way, maybe perhaps. Uh, <laughs> how how am I like uh, missing the checkmate there? Oh my! I could have done that in the first place. Ah. Uh, anyways. For some reason, it popped out right now. So just going to do it this time. Stopping rook e8, and then that's just obviously a checkmate. That was like pretty embarrassing to miss the queen sack in the first place. But um, I mean, that's like literally everything I was watching out for, but um, somehow messed it up. But managed to get a game. Pretty convincing fashion. Yeah, knight f4. I think we did a pretty okay job by like canceling rook b1, rook e1. Now rook e8 uh, occurred to me as a mistake. 
I think he's definitely supposed to do like 97 and then the main idea I was considering was perhaps h3, bishop a5 and then uh, rook b5. But then it seems like he could maybe just do c5, so not sure we have to start with it this way. The point is if we play rook b5 and he's forced to do something like bishop g6, we could potentially great, get like a big attack. Either swing the rook over, maybe even like rook g5 could sometimes be interesting. Uh, maybe just h4, go for direct attack. You really want to watch out for the rook lifts in the in the Vienna when you get the open b file zone. So. Um, then we go like a pretty straightforward win. It was just me messing around with it a little. <laughs> Missed queen g6, which is like a bit embarrassing, but uh, uh, yeah, I think we can just move on to the next game. Quick interruption. If you're really enjoying this kind of content, please consider liking the video because it really helps the algorithm boost the video to more people. You know that is very much appreciated, so let's just jump uh, right back into the action. All right, getting another white game. Going for another Vienna. And the am going for knight c6, where I don't really am a huge fan of f4 because ef creates a queen h4 idea. I only like uh, f4 against uh, knight f6, where they're only like reasonable moves, let's say d5. So against knight c6, we're just gonna play uh, normal Vienna, get the bishop to c4, and knight f6 is what I uh, expect them to play. Gonna be going d3 and They've got now like many ideas, knight a5, bishop b4, or bishop to c5, or even d6. So let's uh, see what my opponent has in mind. He goes for bishop c5, which is definitely big main line. I'm just going to stick with f4, d6, and then knight f3. No need to be afraid of bishop g1, rook g1. That's like a good version for us. Um, I mean, e4, bishop takes on f4 is a line for black, but I think good for us. Now, f e knight e5, hitting the bishop, I don't think it's something we really want to. And I'm just going to play knight f3. Threatening uh, f e5. Now, on knight g4, usually you don't need to be afraid of this knight landing on f2. You can just play queen e2 and if knight f2 rook f1. And in case uh, bishop f2 check, you can just move your king, I think, like king f1 and then go h3. And uh, white usually has a big advantage. Now... Opponent playing d5 move makes me a little bit suspicious. I don't know what to say about this. d5 feels like an engine move in that position. I know it's not bad. But I guess it all comes down to how he's going to follow it up. The engine will recommend crazy moves like this sometimes in these lines, I've noticed. And I'm not like really super sure how to answer. I think I'm just going to play it like the most natural way taking with a bishop maybe taking with a pawn was better but again i'm not like a big expert okay after he plays knight d4 i'm pretty sure he's not cheating because that's not a not a very good move since it's uh moving the knight one more time and not really creating any threats i think we're just safe by playing c3 Hitting this guy, incentivizing him to take and developing our queen. Just extra pawn and uh, better development. Queen h4 check is not a problem as there is simply g3. And there is a threat of f e5 as well that he has to take care of. His ef take it with the bishop, maybe long castle next. He can already short castle as the bishop's uh, taking away uh, the g1 square. But I could do d4 first and then short castle, that's fine. Maybe we'll do that, in fact. Looks a little bit uh, simpler than the other move. Bishop e6, pretty nice try. Sort of uh, shutting down my strongest piece. You can give credits to opponent for that. I can take that sort of opening up his rook, uh, however, which I'm not like necessarily a huge fan of. Hmm. Could play bishop b3, bit of a passive looking move, but I think it's uh, preferable when the choice is to open up his rook. I think I'd much rather play this and then still have ideas to go uh, d4. I just don't think you need to open up your opponent's pieces unless you're forced to. That would be a typical concession. So, keeping the tension. 
idea to go d4 next. I could also go long castle quite easily. I don't really think my king is ever getting uh, vulnerable there. And uh, we see a pretty fortunate move now that the opponent plays f5. If he wanted to do this idea, he had to trade bishops first and then play it. And maybe I would have gone e5, let's say, keeping the file closed. But after f5, the bishop remains undefended and uh, can just get to collect it. And um, then should be a very easy win. King ag8 can just pick up the f5 pawn with my pawn. Not with the bishop because we could potentially run into some problems with g6 maybe. Even though bishop e5 looks winning by force there. I think just this is fine. Supporting the bishop. Bishop e5 ideas next. Maybe focusing on uh, attacking g7. Uh, okay, I think I'm just gonna like cast along. Bishop e5 as an idea. Uh, queen g3 is... Uh, Still, one of the main threats that's gonna be mating him. We do have a nice uh, check mating idea though. If we could like sacrifice the queen on h7 and get the rook to the h file, that would be checkmate. So I'll actually try to play for that, even though it's a fancy idea <laughs> and definitely super unnecessary. Okay, I'm predicting that he will take on a2 now. Which is obviously defended. But um, besides that, I really want to get in like rook e4, queen h3, sacrifice the bishop, and then go queen takes on h7. That would be like a fun way to end this, uh, this game. Wait, can I go rook e4? He wants to sacrifice rook e6 maybe? I mean, so be it if he does that. It's, it's, I think, an interesting try for him so that he can collect the pawn on a2, hoping to get some counter play. But uh, I'm still, like, really hoping for my uh, queen sack idea. There's, like, a million other ways to win this, but... Uh... <laughs> Even though I'm trying to play as simple as I can most of the times, when I see a queen sack, that kind of blows my mind and uh, makes me go crazy at times. I think it's maybe relatable for some of you. <laughs> Just gonna play queen h3 now, his move makes uh, no threats, and then I'm gonna be like, oh no, my bishop. That is gonna happen next. Not really a whole lot opponent can do about it. If he goes h6, that's just like inviting uh, bishop takes. Even though as much as I would love to make queen takes, uh, bishop e5 work. <laughs> I think we'll have to just stick with bishop takes on h6 in that position. But I think uh, there, there might be even like a funnier way to checkmate this opponent in case he doesn't stop the queen sack. I think I'm going to play like bishop b8 actually next. <laughs> Which looks like the weirdest move of all time. He's going to be like, oh, that's a hanging bishop. But little does he know of uh, what's about to come. <laughs> Okay, opponent, make a move. He's like trying so hard to come up with uh, with an idea to like swindle the game. It's actually impressive, but uh... oh, he just plays g6, allowing uh, checkmate. There is bishop e5. Rook f6. Then there is bishop takes on f6. I wonder if there's like any funny checkmate. Doesn't seem to be. I'll just have to go for the mate in one. No point in sacking the queen. But just to clarify it for everybody that's like kind of wondering what nonsense I've been talking about for like the last 10 moves. I was saying, let's say he does go a5. Here my idea was to do something uh, funny like bishop b8, calling like, oh no, my bishop. I mean, 100%, somebody that's 600 rated 
takes. But then you go queen h7. <laughs> and just get up a uh, really nice uh, checkmate since these two squares are covered and it's just like a back rank. Or if you think about it, it works the same way. So pawns taking that, bishops taking that away, and rook is delivering the mate. So, okay, guys, with that being said, I think we can move on to the um, next game. I mean, d5 was a strange line. I think it's kind of computer approved. 95 is like the best line from what I remember, but I wasn't sure of like what's best uh, play for black. Normally though, I would expect moves such as d6, which uh, leads to like, there's the typical lines arising after bishop b6, knight takes, uh, and castle. I really expect to see quite a lot of these uh, in the following games of the series, so make sure to stay tuned for that. Alright, looks like we're getting the white pieces once again, and we're gonna be sticking with the little Vienna opening. And uh, we do get to see the bishop to b4 move, which is actually interesting. It is definitely, I think, perhaps mentioned in the course, or maybe somebody said I forgot to mention this. I don't quite remember. It's definitely a sideline that is uh, not really the greatest move of all time. But um, still, I think in general, I will um, keep dealing with this um, in a way that uh, I think easiest for you, honestly, without having to learn too much theory. I think the easiest is just to play something like bishop to c4. And in case they take, we take back with a deep on just keep it super sort of Vienna-like style. Okay, queen f6 definitely bit of a bit of a mistake by my opponent. Just inviting 95. Now it's way too juicy not to get played. Hitting both the queen and the bishop, and he's gotta watch out for the c7 square as well. So too tempting uh, not to get played uh, here. Mm. Queen d6 kind of only move. Does play queen g5, which is uh, hitting g2. So we've got like many options to choose from. Taking free bishop can hardly go wrong with that. Taking c7 reasonable as well. Knight f3 an option. Forcing the queen to go back, or if they take, there is rook g1 and we're winning. But I think easiest is, okay, we take the free piece, queen g2, and then, all right, how do we defend the rook? You guys may try to post the video in that position and uh, come up with a way to defend the rook. Because there's only one way, but it's a pretty effective one. So uh, you definitely want to keep in mind this little uh, idea that... Uh, when queen g2, you can play queen f3, covering the uh, rook, like, through the enemy queen, literally. This is called the x-rays concept. I will perhaps try to explain it after the game in the another step, if it's, like, a little bit unclear still. But one just goes queen g6, hitting e4 pawn. I can check him, pick up the rook, which is, I think, generally the simplest, and you should try to stick with simple moves. We're already winning, so perhaps you may be trying to make an argument that we don't really, really need that rook to win, but uh, I mean, a rook is a rook. Inflation is getting crazy nowadays, so gotta pick up as much uh, material as we can. And important here, I think, to play queen e2, defending the bishop. Bishop e2 is a mistake because of queen g2. I mean, it's not a mistake, then just bishop f3. I'm just talking nonsense here. Bishop e2 is fine, but I'm just gonna play queen e2 incentivizing a queen trade if possible and if queen g2 then we're gonna get to play the queen f3 idea that i wanted to highlight earlier now that the queen is literally protecting the h1 rook through the enemy queen that's like the x-ray uh, concept here that is pretty basic but still uh, overlooked by so many beginners so if you're a new player definitely wanna fully understand what the x-rays are in chess and okay now we've got a position where we are up uh, minor piece and the rook. So up like 8 points, points I think. But, oh, technically it's 6. We've got it here. But like anyways, uh, what do you want to do here? Knight is uh, almost trapped. You want to rescue the knight. That's number one priority. Then finish development while constantly trying to exchange as many pieces as we can. 
when I play Z4, that's not very nice of him because I have to make a pretty awkward uh, knight move. But I'm going to be aggressive. I'm going to be hitting E4 pawn. He's probably going to go knight F6, but at, uh, not only hitting E4, it's also hitting F7. So it was, in fact, a double attack. And now he goes knight B4. Hitting C2, threatening a B4. Now, bishop B3 would give unnecessary counterplay after C4. You'll have to come up with an A3 move. Which is not the easiest find of all time, but I think quite nice. So maybe I want to, like, show it on the board for you. So I'm just going to play bishop B3. C4, if he tries that, I mean, big thumbs up for opponent. I mean, this is not the greatest try. Hitting the knight, boy can just... Uh, Take the pawn again, like up so much material. I'm just gonna go like 93, offering that trade. Okay, just um, gonna be collecting the free pieces this game. It's maybe not uh, the most instructive one at the end of the day, but I think it's quite an effective weapon that. You can get against the early bishop b4, which, hey, may be quite a common move uh, for lower rated games in uh, in the Vienna. You see, e5. Gonna centralize my knight. Could take another pawn with check. I'm just gonna play d3, though. Idea to take the enemy knight and I'm just gonna play a4 now I'm still keeping the discovery in reserve so that we get a more more of like a deadly discovery in case he moves the rook somewhere rook d8 still not letting me do any fancy discoveries I'm just gonna take the free pawn next we can uh, get the um, rook onto the g file if I want to Okay, king goes to e6. That's just a fork that we can use. Pick up the rook. Knight c6 I want to do next. Cover these squares. Okay, he plays the uh, king there. I'm gonna go bishop a4. And okay, I'm gonna go rook to g7 now. Gonna block his pawns. And we're gonna advance. This is definitely a little bit unnecessary, but I think it's quite fun. Oh, he offers a draw. <laughs> Not gonna take the draw. Gonna get his king in the middle. And I think now it's time to castle. Wait. I want to do like the latest castle in a, in a game of chess. Can we play for that? Like I'm definitely having that idea to mate, but... Uh... <laughs> oh no, wait, is he gonna like wait now till the end? Is he gonna like time me down like six minutes? <laughs> oh no, that's unlucky if it happens. That's uh, kind of what I deserve for uh, watching a little bit too much uh, chess bra. <laughs> would have finished the game way earlier I had like a main in one for instance like on previous turn but I was like trying to see maybe we can castle past move 60 I think that would have been like a record that's like been what I was playing for but uh, okay <laughs> that's kind of what it feels like when you've got to play but uh, finish your side quests on uh, immortal game big shout out to them quite an Interesting platform, I think.
but I think we're literally gonna get time down and I'll have to crop that on the editing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, we do manage to cash this one in eventually and I don't think there's like really that much to talk about. Just got like a pretty easy win after I played uh, the move 95. He was supposed to play queen d6 and then I've got like a big advantage but still not like a win by force. But what I actually had in mind to show you guys in case of queen c6, a pretty sneaky idea that uh, you can use which may not be the best move objectively but... A nice uh, a little sacrifice to play bishop b5. Because the bishop is actually untouchable as there will be knight takes on c7 as a fork. Which is a common theme in like let's say uh, openings such as the modern. Okay just to show you an idea where uh, this came from. After c5, dc, queen a5. This is a line that I'm giving in my uh, chessable course. Now after knight d5 in case let's say. Uh, black goes d6, there is uh, bishop to b4 that wins by uh, force, and on queen c6 there is bishop b5. Same uh, motive, this time black cannot avoid it, and uh, knight c7 picking up the queen. So, uh, hopefully we're gonna get to see that uh, sometime in the in the rating climb, so we can just move on to the next game. Alright, getting the white pieces, and uh, hopefully we're gonna see a 1e5 game so that uh, we can play the Vienna. And let's see, knight c6, knight f6, which one uh, are we gonna get on the board? Looks to be none of that, just the good old uh, Philidor. Against knight f6 I like to go for the Vienna Gambit, and uh, against knight c6 I like to go for the Vienna opening with bishop to c4. But against d6 I'm actually not uh, super sure what the main recommendation is in the course, thinking that uh, f4 pawn takes is definitely an option that, uh, well, could be a little bit annoying, but I mean, maybe we can just uh, try to play it then, like uh, sort of a king's uh, gambit. I was thinking maybe to play like knight f3, g5, um, and then bishop c4 in case he goes g4 to castle, and just give up the knight, and maybe even play bishop takes on f7 in that position, which may be completely insane, but sometimes the theory goes like that in the king's gambit. Now, when f5 happens, it's definitely taking me out of book. In general, I'm just uh, trying to finish development. Um, a move like uh, knight f3 would be first uh, to consider on my uh, to-do list. I think that's definitely an option. Also d4 maybe not so bad this time. It's definitely a very weird position to, I think, <laughs> both play and explain. I can give you, uh, I can give you that. I think there is definitely small chances to ever go wrong with a move such as knight f3. So I'm gonna play it, no matter what he does. Prioritizing development is the uh, way to go. And he could be taking on e4, followed by uh, something like d5. I definitely see this happening. He could be taking that pawn as well, which I don't really particularly mind. Then I was thinking to just play a move like d4, opening a bishop's path, trying to regain the uh, pawn, and. Well, also we're not necessarily in a in a rush with uh, cashing in the pawn. Could start bishop d3 and then short castle since it's pretty tricky for him to defend the f4 pawn anyways. But uh, I'd much rather focus on uh, developing. I think that's like a fair strategy. Not afraid of moves like g5 or anything like that. Um, We'll see, expecting some kind of knight f6 and then we castle, okay, knight c6 could be perhaps connected with idea of him taking on uh, d4, exploiting the fact that uh, my knight is uh, gonna be pinned. So I can at the very least play c3 and uh, avoid that like completely. I was also considering whether I can castle and knight e4 maybe sacrifice the queen, but that's a little bit too much I think and uh, usually not required.
I would say from my experience that uh, you don't really have to sacrifice your queen in order to win uh, against uh, these opponents. Actually, in fact, I think you shouldn't necessarily be looking forward to sacrifice that much against these guys because uh, they're just gonna like give away their pieces. So you can just keep uh, like a balanced game for a while and uh, that is definitely gonna be a blunder happening sooner or later. Now expecting him to play knight f6. And then I'm just like trying to figure out. Yeah, I think this is a blunder. He's going to take with a pawn. There's no way he takes uh, that way, I think, in this rating range. And he's just going to do that. And I have bishop g5. Then he's going to do, I think, bishop takes on f3. Only clever move in the possession. And if I take back, uh, my bishop remains undefended. So I think, well... Intuitively, bishop f6, bishop d1, bishop d8 didn't feel very good, but it seems that uh, perhaps we just keep the extra exchange there, so that's fine. The main alternative uh, I was focusing on is bishop f3, queen d2. Protecting the bishop, queen has to move, then we like pick up the rook, and it would be, I think, an easy win. But I think even the end game is. Uh, Definitely feels winning and perhaps what we're gonna go for. I'm just trying to keep it simple. I think definitely for somebody that's uh, around 600 rating strength, finding Quinito is very hard. Therefore, we will stick with the straightforward uh, end game uh, idea and just gonna emerge with an extra exchange at least. According to my calculation, looks like my opponent perhaps disconnected. I'm not sure. Maybe he rage quitted. It would be like a bit un unnatural, I think, to rage quit here when you still can throw in a move like bishop takes um, on f3. But okay, it looks like he just abandoned the game and uh, we managed to get the win. I mean, just to kind of clarify it for um, you guys, if he was playing... Bishop f3, you could do both queen d2, which is apparently top line according to the computer, as you can see. But the end game was simply winning as well. Nearly plus 3, because we've got uh, simply a rook for a knight in this end game, and that's just easily winning. So, what did we add to do? Not that much, really. I mean, I played f4, I was surprised by uh, f5. I think, by the way, f4, I'm not super sure it's like the precise move here. I actually forgot what my main recommendation against this is. I will have to check. Uh, but I know f4 is interesting. My idea was to play it in an interesting fashion. That, uh, okay, here I think I'm, I may be having queen f3 as a move in the course. That kind of rings a bell. But... I was like really contemplating during the game about something like g4 and then castle, gf3 and then playing this in more of like a romantic uh, game. But actually even bishop takes on f7 might be interesting here. The computer will say that I'm insane, but sometimes this is like not very easy for him to defend. Trying to play d4, bishop takes on f4, e5 or down to pieces, but... Enemy king could be weak in some lines. I don't think this is like the perfect way of playing it, but uh, it definitely is something you can mess around with uh, while playing against this uh, rating range. All right, all right. Getting the white pieces and facing an opponent that's rated over 700. So not getting in the high uh, elo games yet, but slowly we're climbing there, especially when opponent goes for the alekine. And okay, play super principal chess, uh, expand with the pawns in the center, and just, uh, yeah, I think I usually just like to set up these pawns, going for the Austrian attack, just go like knight f3, bishop to d3, that's usually where the bishop belongs, uh, castle, short, normally, there's a4, h5 idea as well, but... I'm just gonna keep it super simple, guys, okay? There's like a pretty juicy square on e4. We may uh, very well go for it. So, knight c3 idea, knight e4. 
just gonna do that. If b5, just knight g5. If knight b4, I think we can just keep the bishop with bishop e2. Now, that move is creating a threat of knight e4, so I'm just gonna protect my pawn. No need to be afraid of knight e3 because the bishop covers it. Plays b6. Now, g4 is a thematical uh, idea, but there is knight h4, that's a bit annoying, so I'm gonna play queen e1. Taking away that, and next, the main reason why you want to push g4 here, and this is something that I uh, I think I explained uh, earlier into the video, or if not, I explained that about the Karokan. <laughs> Just in general, you really want to think a lot in terms of pawn break. So, look at these pawns. The pawns are like telling a lot about the position. These pawns are saying, okay, we need another guy on f6. Yeah, if the pawn is getting there, that's most likely made. So how is the pawn going to get there? If you go f5, he's just going to take it. So you need g4, f5. And that's the main plan. And that literally just wins. This is how you want to look at these kind of close positions specifically, but also in general. You really want to start thinking in terms of pawn breaks rather than thinking about uh, concrete threats or like chip tricks. So, bishop to b7, just going g4. Knight has two very awkward squares. And um, yeah, we'll see. I think I'm not going to try to like play it the optimal way. I'll just focus on playing knight g3 and f5, which I, I'm i not sure it's like the most precise way to play this game, but I think definitely will be quite uh, instructive. Also, I mean, quite deadly is if we play g5, honestly, knight f5 and knight f6 check. We could just do that and uh, it's going to be a mate with a queen sack. I'm just going to do it right away. I know it may sound insane, but uh, I can definitely see a lot of checkmating patterns from these positions. I already have them in my head. It's going to be queen h7 and rook mate on the h file. I don't know how yet, but that one is going to happen, uh, guys, I'm telling you. This is just the power of getting a pawn to f6. So we haven't like really got the... Um, Mm, pawn there in itself by pushing f4 f5 but we did it in this way so still remember i mentioned that we already have it on the board magically you see just like that what a knight to f6 the pawn is like really well defended now i want to get my queen to h6 but there's like one enemy the knight we gotta get rid of the knight okay just take it if he takes this way that's like force mate so he cannot do that Therefore, he takes that way and saying there is not an easy way for me to get my queen around. Which is, in fact, maybe true for now, but not gonna be for a while. I'm just gonna start with uh, queen to h4. I know a lot of you may be wondering what is my bishop doing. You don't really need to think about the bishop when you can checkmate your opponent. I think that's uh, fair to say. But also... I think maybe there's a pretty nice idea that we can use. Since his knight is kind of running out of squares. Yeah, I think I'm just going to use this little idea, guys. You may really like this one. I'm going to go b4. This is going to be looking like super odd for like a lot of you. But we need to bring this rook into the game. And we're going to be taking space. Then I've got like a pretty funny idea. That I think may be quite good here. I'm gonna go A4. Not sure exactly what he's doing. I'm happy to see that because it's just gonna open up this. But now I wanted to do this. So here you see like the advantage of having uh, so much space. It really makes it super easy for us to maneuver our pieces around. Now we're gonna take towards the center plus opening up bishop's path. Then the rook is gonna come this way. When the rook comes in... This is usually going to be a pretty devastating attack. Queen h4 next. Whoops. And then queen h5. Oh, shit. I cannot draw arrows. Yeah, like this. So, queen h4, queen h5. And we just uh, get the checkmate. He attacks us. I mean, we can just ignore it, honestly, at this point. You can also play b5. And wonder where is the knight going to go. Probably to like b8. Which is kind of sad if you think about it, but... Uh, I lost my childhood for playing this game, so not sure which part is <laughs> more sad. I'm just going to go queen h4 now. And uh, there's a threat of simply picking up the pawn. 
because well you know there's a pin so that is why uh, I had to bring my rook there in the first place now it would actually be quite satisfying if he wouldn't let me like brutally checkmate him but okay looks like it's gonna be a brutal checkmate Simply, there's no way for him to deal with queen h6, queen g7, and uh, that's just an easy checkmate. Yeah, there's like a lot of fancy ways to find a checkmate as well, but uh, I think like no need to <laughs> show off here. Just, uh, yeah, in these kind of positions, you realize like the position is so winning when you can play a move like king h1. And your opponent still has no threats. Like that's usually uh, kind of a really sort of ultimate BM that the old masters used to do. Like when they have like a completely winning position and they can like take stuff in one, they would play King H1. Just like, let's say the old masters were evil sometimes, but very good. So <laughs> then we get the checkmate and we're like uh, one point away from crossing this magic 700 barrier. So... You guys should uh, stay tuned for that. All right, all right. Looks like we're getting the white pieces and uh, you heard it right. We're going to be playing 1e4 in this rating climb. You may be wondering, wait, how on earth does a London system player uh, goes for e4? Is that like a mouse slip? And funny thing is that it's not. And uh, I'm going to be playing e4 and I'm going to be trying to stick to my main recommendations of the e4 chessable courses that I have. Uh, I don't think they are necessarily the best uh, opening choice, like honestly speaking, for players that are 600 rated. Definitely think the Rosolimo is quite a sophisticated uh, opening to begin with, but these openings are like clearly something that you can use, let's say, for like a lifetime repertoire. And if you're like aiming to even get a title, I think there, sh there should be like no issues using my repertoires with it. So. Um, we're going to be playing e4 and we already get to face the Sicilian defense, which is uh, a little bit surprising because I would be expecting a lot of these players to go for like e5 against e4. But there we go. We've got the Sicilian and uh, against knight e6. My main recommendation is the uh, Rosolimo. The main idea for it is just to avoid the uh, Zvezhnikov Sicilian. That's like kind of theoretically speaking the biggest problem. Uh, that's what... Um, yeah, you know, like the, um, <laughs> uh, what Magnus Carlsen played in his worst championship match against Fabiano Caruana. In the meantime, my opponent's like talking in the chat, asking me to play something or, uh, if, if I'm AFK, I'm going to say him, uh, I'm an NPC just to be trolling a little bit. Uh, I'm not sure whether you find that funny or you unsubscribed. Uh, okay. Opponent goes queen a5, hitting the bishop. I'm just going to be developing uh, more pieces and uh, yeah, just trying to speed up development. Uh, Queen a5 is a sideline for sure. It's not like really super new move. It's not great either. Uh, yeah, there's not really that much to say about it. Bishop takes on c6 was playable as well, doubling up his pawns. But uh, I'll just stick to like the, um, I think... Um, normal moves for uh, for a while and later on when it comes to making critical decisions I'll try to avoid going for like fancy tactics or any sort of advanced procedure it's just trying to do things that uh, maybe you somebody that's around 1600 could get to recreate so we see 94 eating my bishop shouldn't take because that will just lose a piece so putting going for a bit of a sneaky threat I'm just gonna play bishop to c4 uh Giving him, yeah, the chance to take. I'm going to take back with a queen. Case of b5, I think there will be... Maybe knight takes on d4 and then knight takes on b5. I think knight d4 should kind of refute that. There's also bishop d5 as a move. And when he takes... Just going to take... I've got three pieces developed. He's got only the queen. Plus, we're hitting f7. So, definitely we managed to pick up a pretty nice uh, leading development. And uh, what are we going to do to this move? We're going to punish e5. Knight has to move, f7 drops, that should give us a pretty straightforward uh, winning position, I have to say. Let's see what opponent uh, 
comes up with. Maybe D5 is like the only sort of reasonable idea, but um, still I could do anything against it with a good position. We see Queen to B4, which is a pretty interesting idea, trying to go for the counter attack. But we're not in a rush, so I could do moves such as uh, b3, d3, anything to defend the bishop, and then still he's got the same issue with the f6 knight. So I think d3 looks most natural here. Covering the bishop, knight has to leave. And then uh, I'm gonna be hopefully able to play queen takes on f7. Once again, still d5 is like interesting for him. Okay, he just resigns, uh, so. <laughs> we can already title this um, video how to beat the Sicilian in uh, 8 moves. I mean, there's no clickbait. There we go. But besides that, um, yeah, not really that much we can talk about here. He just tried to hit me with an opening trap if I was where to take. By the way, this is actually still not like losing for me. 95, queen b5, there is knight c7. But now that I'm looking at it, maybe e6 is a bit annoying. So I'll have to move the knight and then the bishop drops. I managed to avoid this trap and uh, yeah. Normally in these uh, elos, once you avoid the main opening trap that they play, you're just going to win. So <laughs> managed to do that. Uh, all right. So moving on to the uh, second game. Still, nobody plays uh, e5. We've got another... We're looking at uh, knight c6 move, and I think I'm gonna I'm gonna be playing like what d4. I think I'm gonna be playing d4 against this. I think this is what I give in my uh, chessable course. I actually kind of forgot what the main recommendation against knight c6 is, but I think um, that should be the move because also I personally play knight f3 quite a lot here as well, just giving him the chance to get back into e5 positions. But definitely d4 I think is best. And he plays d6. Interesting opening for a 500 rated guy, I have to say. Even going c4 is, uh, is an alternative here. And just trying to go for uh, more of like a King's Indian kind of opening. That's like, there's nothing wrong with that. Mm. Yeah, I think I'm going to stick with that. Definitely remember uh, recommending something like this. However, I've got to be honest, my memory is a little bit rusty when it comes to that. But I think perhaps it could be quite instructive if we just uh, build up like a massive pawn center with f4 next. No matter like what he plays. So, uh, yeah, the, the main kind of idea. Uh, usually when dealing with uh, such setups would be to play with f4 and go for the Austrian attack. Now I feel like including this c4 move just against this Nimzovich Larsen kind of opening. But uh, yeah, look at our massive center. Just think about it. Think about how many squares these bad boys are controlling. Yeah, look at this. Look at this. So they are controlling. I don't know how many is that, but we'd be guessing it's six central squares. That definitely has to count for something. Opponent goes d5. Can definitely take uh, twice and win a pawn. However, we're not going to be like really winning pawns here. I think I like to just take and play e5. And the reason why I'm not going e5 first is because he could do dc. Then the bishop opens up. So I really want to keep his bishop closed by doing this, forcing the pawn to get there. Now just doing the e5 move. Again, 95, nothing wrong with that, like, whatsoever. Um, maybe that's perhaps uh, something we should play, since it's more of an obvious move for, like, a 600-rated player. But uh, I'm just going to stick with e5, okay? No need to, like, open up this bishop, just uh, advancing in the center. Mm, depends on how he's going to develop next, I'd be guessing... Something like this should be the way to develop the knight or even use the h6 square trying to get over to f5. Definitely against that we could play something like bishop e3. Okay, f6 uh, definitely feels like a bit of a weak move since he's breaking in the center without developing his pieces. That definitely feels like a common uh, mistake for this rating range. I'm just going to keep uh, developing stuff. I think the bishop goes to d3. 
Bishop B5 is not really such an appealing move here because there's a6 and not very clear what the bishop does on uh, that diagonal since taking on c6 is not really part of the plan. I mean, why would you give the uh, bishop for the knight uh, so easily? Definitely not liking that. Just bishop to d3, keeping an eye on this uh, juicy diagonal. Gonna take towards the center usually since we are also preparing castle and then the rook is gonna be quite uh, nicely placed on the f file. Just goes knight b4. Hunting my precious bishop. Normally in these positions you could definitely play something like bishop b1 followed by a3. The knight has to go home and then bishop back to d3 and you get to keep your bishop. Which is quite nice. But I'm thinking to just uh, castle and prioritize uh, fast development here. So yeah, I think that's uh, how we roll. Just uh, castle as soon as we can. A bishop a6, come on uh, way to blunder here. We can go for the bishop trade because I think most of the 600s, whenever they see a trade, uh, they go for it. And when they see a check, I mean, it's important that they notice it, but they also go for it, which happens to win the knight in uh, this case. So we're about to just uh, pick that one up. And um, yeah, it looks like our central strategy somehow paid off, still we didn't really get to show much uh, much of a plan like at all since opponent just kind of gifted this free piece. But usually I think the main learning from this game is that um, whenever your opponent plays like this goofy moves, uh, weakening uh, or like just playing random moves on the side, they expand in the center whenever they break, spend a little bit of time to uh, figure out what would be like an efficient way to deal with this uh, tension in the center like we had to do earlier with uh, knight to I mean with pawn to d5 that's when we had to like really make the only interesting decision in the game so definitely take your time when something like this happens and if you judge that uh, situation properly um, you generally should have, should have quite an easy game afterwards so that's how you want to uh, crash these sidelines, especially when you play one e4. Uh, I think if you play principal, these sidelines are are pretty bad. Like if you compare it with the London, okay, if you're like a loyal London viewer that's uh, still somehow watching my e4 videos, I mean, big shout out to you for that uh, in case that happens. But um, yeah, in case you are a London type of guy, Whenever they do sidelines, we're not really trying to kill them. We're basically just trying to get a typical London game and uh, play some of our nice little ideas. But when we play e4 and they do this goofy stuff, you definitely uh, get to see that they have to pay a much, uh, yeah, much bigger bill. So when I just go g5 and I think we can take that, delivering a double check. And there is a free queen, but I also usually like to checkmate in one, so we're gonna go for that. It is mate, everybody, because the queen is covering these two squares and uh, enemy king has no moves. The position was completely losing, but it mainly had to do with this um, goofy opening, so uh, yeah, with that being said, I think we can move on to the next game. Thanks a lot for making it uh, this far into the video. Before you go, I just wanted to remind that uh, all the openings that are used in this uh, rating climb are actually part of my uh, 1e4 uh, bundle on Chessable. So if you're interested to have a deeper look inside the opening theory, please feel free to check out my courses by uh, using the first link from the description. However, if you're not sure, you can check out another video about the Vienna and maybe that will make it more clear whether you want to try this opening or not.